Paula Fiscal Show. We will be covering news events, conferences, and bringing in distinguished guests. So thank you so much for joining us, and stay tuned. Is Pat Lakey, general contractor and owner of the San Francisco Investment Development Company. He has over 30 years experience in the constru construction industry. Mr. Lakey will share with us his inside tips to encourage and motivate the young people of today to consider a career in this field. Mr. Lakey, how did you get started? Well, I started when I was at a very young age of 17. I started out sweeping floors, uh, scrapping materials, cleaning up, and uh, I did these things for about six months or so until I got enough experience and the contractor had uh, confidence in me to, pr to promote me up to an apprentice. And where I worked for uh, many years, uh, learning all the aspects of the trade until I became a journeyman. And then I worked from foundation all the way up to roofing, finish work, doors, windows, hardware installation, and uh, up to superintendent and even uh, foreman and uh, general contractor. So did you always work as a carpenter? Uh, no, for, uh, for almost five years I worked as a business agent for the Carpenters Union uh, where I uh, worked as uh, organizing workers, representing uh, members in grievances, uh, I negotiated contracts, um, and various other jobs that, uh, that were in the field. Um, but my favorite function of that, of that job was working with the apprentices. I, I sat on an apprenticeship disciplinary committee where the, uh, the apprentices would come before us who had missed class or weren't showing up to work, weren't getting their hours in. And we would work with them to help them uh, get on the right track to getting through the program. And it was very rewarding to see these, uh, these young individuals and some older individuals who were going through the program succeed. What is the most difficult obstacle for anyone trying to get into the construction industry today? Um, I would say showing up. I mean, the, the thing is, is uh, you know, mo a lot of time the youth of today have been raised on the computers and video games, and it's they don't have the motivation to get up off the couch and go out and actually into the real world and show up. Um, you've got to wear the right clothes. If you if you show up to the job and you're wearing, you know, clothes that are loose fitting that can be caught in a saw or, you know, get caught. Uh, as materials being passed by you, that's not going to function. Or you can't show up with tennis shoes when you need boots. Um, but uh, once you become, once you do get a job, you have to pay attention. You have to listen to what the contractor is asking you, or the, or you know, your supervisor, your foreman, because a lot of times it's the communication problem that uh, that persists in construction, where the uh, individual doesn't understand the. Uh, task at hand and they make a mistake and that costs the contractor a lot of money. If you make a lot of mistakes, then um, then you're not going to have be working very long. And you got to do a good job, uh, treat everybody with respect, uh, you know, ask questions but don't be sarcastic. Uh, listen. Most of the time if you just paid attention and listen, you would get all the answers you, uh, you know and don't make the same mistake over and over again. If you make a mistake, Think about what you did wrong and rectify the situation because if you keep making the same mistake over and over, you will not, um, you will not keep the job. And what about uh, finding a company that's willing to give you a chance to learn? Is that uh, one of the factors too? Yeah, that's a big factor. Um, you know, finding work has always been difficult. It's in the construction industry, it, you know, it has, it has such high peaks and low valleys that there are times when there's hundreds and hundreds of carpenters looking for work, you know, trying to get like one job and there's a hundred carpenters. So, you know, you really got to be diligent and go out and look, you know, look for the work. And once you find someone that's willing to hire you, what about uh, showing up on time and reporting for work? Yeah, um, that's really important. If you if you uh, don't show up on time, they have to get the job done. If if they expect to get a job done in three weeks, they have a certain amount of overhead that it costs them to run for that time. And um, if they uh, if you're not getting it done on time, or if you're not showing up and you're late and missing days, it takes them longer. It costs them more money. What would you like to say to someone? 
wanting to get into construction as a career? Well, I think it's a wonderful career for somebody who wants to, who's, who's, who enjoys physical labor and it likes working with their hands. Um, it's not a really easy job. It, it does take some, you know, a uh, little bit of cognitive skills. And, uh, and if you show up and you are willing to learn, it's a great career, especially nowadays because a lot of the youth uh, did not go into construction because of the um, – uh, tech industry. A lot of people wanted to go into, you know, making video games, movies, startup companies. So uh, as the uh, construction industry uh, workers age, they're going to be retiring and moving on to f other parts of the career that aren't so physically demanding, and there's going to be a big void for, uh, for people to do the work. And the biggest thing is, is you can't outsource this type of work. You can't take, a, you know, the project of building a building or uh, fixing a building or doing renovation and take that offshore. The worker has to do it here. So if you get into this type of work now, I think it's a, a good, uh, you know, it's good for the future. I think there'll be a lot of work for people in the future in construction. And would you recommend anything specifically to assist potential construction workers to finding this work? Well, um, there's a lot of work out there and you know you could go through the city and go to each you know project and ask if they're looking for work um, but one of the best ways I think is to look in the phone book or on the um, internet and look at or online and look up uh, organized labor because the labor unions have apprenticeship programs that will teach you they can uh, give you ideas of different aspects of careers in construction electrical plumbing elevator work and uh, they're, I believe that they're always looking for good candidates. And what do you see in the future for construction workers in the Bay Area? Well, like I said, there's, a, there's going to be a big attrition of, uh, you, of workers because they're getting older. Uh, construction is hard on the body. So as you get older, you tend to move into from being a carpenter up to being a supervisor, superintendent, contractor, and then you eventually retire. And I think that a lot of our workers nowadays are in the superintendent uh, contractor retiring mode, so there's going to be a big void if we don't start filling these places. So I believe there is a good, uh, there's good aspects for the future of construction. And uh, earlier you were talking about some of the excuses that our young people sometimes come up with. Could you give us a few more details on that? Well, um, contractors have have, and superintendents and foremen have heard all of the excuses. I mean, a guy will come in and tell you that he left his shoes in his friend's car and that's why he couldn't show up. Or, you know, he ran out of gas or a friend of his ran out of gas and he had to bring him gas in the middle of the night. You know, various reasons or, or they repeatedly show up late. A contractor needs to get the job done. The, you know, they, it doesn't get done by itself. If the workers aren't showing up to do the work, it costs the contractor money. Every hour they're not there, he's still paying the overhead. And uh, what about the uh, occasions when you sometimes go to work every day and, and uh, you get along with your boss and, and still you lose the job? Well, you got to realize, you can't take it to heart that it's your fault all the time. You know, I'll tell you, a lot of times it is the worker's fault when they are late or they're, you know, they don't show up or they don't have the proper equipment or stuff. Then, it's, then it can be their fault. But if you show up all the time on time and you're, you do good work and there's another guy there that does a little less work than you, hasn't showed up on time, and he's still there working and you get fired or laid off, you can't take that to heart. You have to realize that there's certain aspects that you don't have no idea about. It could be nepotism. It could be the guy's, you know, uh, you know, guy's nephew or something, and he has to keep it to keep his sister happy. Or it could be that that person has seniority on another project that you didn't see him working on, um, and that you know they've actually been working there longer than you, and maybe they the owner knows that there's some reason why they're not standing, you know, up to certain things. You just can't take it to heart. You just have to keep looking for work. If you get laid off, immediately don't sit around and collect unemployment and start, you know, thinking of how it's a vacation. It's not. You have to continually look for work and don't burn the ties. Like if you do get laid off from a situation like that, don't get upset and yell and scream. That's going to hurt no anybody but yourself. It's just, you know, you know, unless there's a, a real reason why you can complain about it, I would just move on 
get another job, and maybe you'll go back and work for that person in the future. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, one of the motivational factors to work in this industry and the word motivate. What can you offer to help motivate the young person looking for a job in this industry? Well, f well for myself, um, when I first started, it was the camaraderie of working with the other carpenters and other uh, uh, trades on the job. You know, you had, a, you had a banter that went back and forth. You joked around. The apprentices were told to go get the bucket of fog or the toenails. And, you know, you'd be looking for a sky hook and the, and the, the carpenters would be snickering at you. And, you know, you'd go to work every day and it was like you were going to hang out with your friends to build something. And at the end of the day, you'd look and you can see something that you've built. And it's very gratifying to, to look one day and see an empty room and come the next, you know, next few weeks and see a whole kitchen or a whole bathroom in there that's beautiful that you did yourself. So, and also the money, you know, I mean, construction pays well. It's, the, the big problem is, is it's in the past, it's had the highs and lows, and so people would work, you know, for, you know, three, four, six months strong, but then they'd be laid off for three or four months, and then they'd work three, six, but, you know, if you can keep working and uh, you have a good work ethic, you will continue to work most of the time, and you can make good money at it. So, in other words, would you say that what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work is, in fact, something that you have to rely on yourself to motivate yourself. Is it because you're going to make money, you're going to get a new car, you're going to be able to go and get uh, dinner with your girlfriend? To motivate yourself to get out of bed and look for that construction job, what are a few more tips you can offer? Well, you've got to look at it this way. You can... Um if you're interested in construction, like I said, you like the physical aspect of it, you feel good after a hard day's work in construction. It's, it, it's, a, it's a, the least expensive way to raise your endorphins and get paid for it. As you go to work, you work hard, you're tired, but you feel gratified at the end of the day. And then when you get that paycheck and you got your sweetheart or you know, somebody that you're, you love that you want to take out, you can afford to do that. Um, but like I said, you have to show up and you have to be diligent for the jobs. When you, when you lose a job in construction and, you know, you're, when you first start out in construction, it's very few carpenters or plumbers or electricians who work for the same company their whole life. Most people work for several companies during their work career. That's a very interesting part of the career as a construction worker. So do you believe that there is a way to be able to tell which companies you're going to work for, which companies you're not going to work for? Is there a, a process for s scheduling where you're going to work? Well, you don't always have the, uh, the, the ability to, to choose. You know, you're, if you haven't worked for several months and you go into a construction office and the guy's screaming and yelling at somebody and you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to work for that guy, but you need the money, you're going to have to go and work for that guy. Now, when the times are, are really going well and there's several job opportunities out there, you can pick and choose who you want to work for. But I myself found that uh, the majority of the time when people are screaming and yelling and there's all this ruckus going on, there's usually a reason for it, and generally it calms down. And if you get into a company and you get to know the way things work, um, you can generally get along and, and work there. Even if there is some animosity and things going on, you can still just... You know, you, you, you don't put up with it, but you don't, uh, you don't shy away from it either. Well, let's take a little bit, a, a look at the history of construction in San Francisco, for example. During the recession, 2007, 2008, 2009, how do you think San Francisco fared during that time? Well, we're fortunate here in the Bay Area because there's, um, there's very little room for building new buildings. And so all this, these properties are, are prized properties. So there's always really somebody looking to build on these properties that there, where there's still room to build. And then we have a very um, eclectic uh, building atmosphere in San Francisco for we have, you know, the Art Deco buildings, we have older um, Victorian buildings, newer buildings, and all of these buildings need maintenance and they need work on them. And a lot of the outdated buildings are being uh, bought up by the techies and uh, they're being renovated because, you know, an old 1950s, 60s kitchen just doesn't cut it with modern times. They want something that's more up to date. So 
Um, it fared very well. The, the San Francisco Bay Area, I think, in all of the recessions has fared very well for the construction industry on all, as a whole. And uh, could you talk a little bit more about the tech industry coming in and buying up properties and, and uh, perhaps some of the young people looking for work are able to switch from a world of uh, computers to a world of construction? Well, I, you know, I really don't know a lot about the techniques coming in. I, I see what I see on the news and what's going on in the Mission District, and I see the big buses coming through town. But uh, all in all, I, I think it's a good thing for the city because I think that um, anytime you have growth, it's good for everybody. It's just the opportunities have to be looked at and expounded upon. I think that the techies, um, I guess as we're calling them the techies, but the, the, the people coming in that you know, are the dot or the, I want to say the dot com people, they, um, they, they have a certain responsibility to help the people in the neighborhoods that they're displacing. At least give them the opportunity to, to own and buy and rent houses in their own neighborhoods by maybe creating something for them. If, they're, if they really want to live in these neighborhoods, they should, all, they should live together in these neighborhoods. The other day I heard someone comment that there was, in this city, that housing does not help people with children and that we had probably 140,000 cats and dogs and about 100,000 kids in this city. Is there anything that you can make a comment about that regarding the uh, construction industry? Well, I don't know. I guess we could uh, we could start building dog houses and cat houses if there's that many in the in uh, in San Francisco. Yeah, I, I knew those statistics. Yeah, it was like 140, 150,000 dogs and there's only uh, 100,000 kids. So, uh, so yeah, I myself am a dog owner, dog lover, so, you know, I can understand that. And um, as far as housing uh, for, for families, I think that, uh, you know, that we have great opportunity in our city for families with housing because there's a lot of uh, properties in the Sunset, Richmond's, Mission, um, and other areas of the city that have uh, have many houses that can be expanded. They're small now, but they can be added a floor or go back in their on their property line and added extra bedrooms so that you could put kids and uh, have kids and family in there. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we want to thank Pat Lakey, owner of SFID General Contracting. And to close the program today, I'm going to ask Mr. Lakey to go ahead and give us a few pointers for those looking for a career in construction. And thank you for tuning in. Yes, I would just, um, if, if you're interested in a career in construction, the first thing I would do is I would go online and look up organized labor and see if there's any of the um, uh, industries out there that are hiring right now for apprentices. If you have any construction experience whatsoever, you could go in and talk to somebody at uh, one of these agencies and see if you can transfer these skills in or if you still have to come in at the bottom. I myself personally think that you should start at the lowest level you can and uh, work your way up because it's the best way for you to learn the industry is to you know, start at the bottom. You've got to crawl before you can walk. Once again, thank you so much for joining the Paula Fiscal Show and we thank our guest, Mr. Pat Lakey, and stay tuned for another special guest to continue the series, The Evolution of My Career.